Daily Reading Through the Bible, Week 12, Day 1, Deuteronomy chapters 6 through 9, Luke chapter 7. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible, netbible.com, copyright 1996 2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC. All rights reserved. Deuteronomy 6. Now these are the commandments, statutes, and ordinances that the Lord your God instructed me to teach you so that you may carry them out in the land where you are headed, and that you may so revere the Lord your God that you will keep all his statutes and commandments that I am giving you, you, your children, and your grandchildren, all your lives to prolong your days. Pay attention, Israel, and be careful to do this so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in number. As the Lord, the God of your ancestors, said to you, you will have a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You must love the Lord your God with your whole mind, your whole being, and all your strength. These words I am commanding you today must be kept in mind, and you must teach them to your children and speak of them as you sit in your house as you walk along the road, as you lie down, and as you get up. You should tie them as a reminder on your forearm, and fasten them as symbols on your forehead. Inscribe them on the door frames of your houses and gates. Then, when the Lord your God brings you to the land he promised your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you, a land with large, fine cities you did not build, houses filled with choice things you did not accumulate, hewn out cisterns you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant and you eat your fill be careful not to forget the lord who brought you out of egypt that place of slavery you must revere the lord your god serve him and take oaths using only his name you must not go after other gods those of the surrounding peoples For the Lord your God, who is present among you, is a jealous God. His anger will erupt against you and remove you from the land. You must not put the Lord your God to the test, as you did at Massa. Keep his commandments very carefully, as well as the stipulations and statutes he commanded you to observe. Do whatever is proper and good before the Lord, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enter and occupy the good land that he promised your ancestors, and that you may drive out all your enemies, just as the Lord said. When your children ask you later on, what are the stipulations, statutes, and ordinances that the Lord our God commanded you? You must say to them, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt in a powerful way. He brought signs and great, devastating wonders on Egypt, on Pharaoh, and on his whole family before our very eyes. He delivered us from there, so that he could give us the land he had promised our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all these statutes, and to revere him, so that it may always go well for us, and he may preserve us. As he has to this day, we will be innocent if we carefully keep all these commandments before the Lord our God, just as he demands. Deuteronomy 7. When the Lord your God brings you to the land that you are going to occupy and forces out many nations before you, Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations more numerous and powerful than you, and he delivers them over to you and you attack them, you must utterly annihilate them, make no treaty with them, and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons, or take their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your sons away from me to worship other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will erupt against you, and he will quickly destroy you. Instead, this is what you must do to them. You must tear down their altars, shatter their sacred pillars, cut down their sacred Asherah poles, and burn up their idols. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. He has chosen you to be his people, prized above all others on the face of the earth. It is not because you were more numerous 
than all the other peoples that the Lord favored and chose you. For in fact, you were the least numerous of all peoples. Rather, it is because of his love for you and his faithfulness to the promise he solemnly vowed to your ancestors, that the Lord brought you out with great power, redeeming you from the place of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So realize that the Lord your God is the true God, the faithful God who keeps covenant faithfully with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, but who pays back those who hate him as they deserve and destroys them. He will not ignore those who hate him, but will repay them as they deserve. So keep the commandments, statutes, and ordinances that I today am commanding you to do. If you obey these ordinances and are careful to do them, the Lord your God will faithfully keep covenant with you as he promised your ancestors. He will love and bless you and make you numerous. He will bless you with many children, with the produce of your soil, your grain, your new wine, your olive oil, the offspring of your oxen, and the young of your flocks in the land that he promised your ancestors to give you, that you will be blessed beyond all peoples. There will be no barrenness among you or your livestock. The Lord will protect you from all sickness, and you will not experience any of the terrible diseases that you knew in Egypt. Instead, he will inflict them on all those who hate you. You must destroy all the people whom the Lord your God is about to deliver over to you. You must not pity them or worship their gods, for that will be a snare to you. If you think these nations are more numerous than I, how can I dispossess them? You must not fear them. You must carefully recall what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and all Egypt, the great judgments you saw, the signs and wonders, the strength and power by which he brought you out. Thus the Lord your God will do to all the people you fear. Furthermore, the Lord your God will release hornets among them until the very last ones who hide from you perish. You must not tremble in their presence, for the Lord your God, who is present among you, is a great and awesome God. He, the God who leads you, will expel the nations little by little. You will not be allowed to destroy them all at once, lest the wild animals overrun you. The Lord your God will give them over to you. He will throw them into a great panic until they are destroyed. He will hand over their kings to you, and you will erase their very names from memory. Nobody will be able to resist you until you destroy them. You must burn the images of their gods, but do not covet the silver and gold that covers them so much that you take it for yourself and thus become ensnared by it for it is abhorrent to the Lord your God. You must not bring any abhorrent thing into your house and thereby become an object of divine wrath along with it. You must absolutely detest and abhor it, for it is an object of divine wrath. Deuteronomy 8 You must keep carefully all these commandments I am giving you today, so that you may live, increase in number, and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised to your ancestors. Remember the whole way by which he has brought you these forty years through the wilderness, so that he might, by humbling you, test you, to see if you have it within you to keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you by making you hungry, and then feeding you with unfamiliar manna. He did this to teach you that humankind cannot live by bread alone, but also by everything that comes from the Lord's mouth. Your clothing did not wear out, nor did your feet swell all these forty years. Be keenly aware that just as a parent disciplines his child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. So you must keep his commandments, live according to his standards, and revere him. For the Lord your God is bringing you to a good land, a land of brooks, springs, and fountains flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, and pomegranates, of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat food in plenty and find no lack of anything, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you can mine copper. You will eat your fill and then praise the Lord your God because of the good land he has given you. Be sure 
you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, ordinances, and statutes that I am giving you today. When you eat your fill, when you build and occupy good houses, when your cattle and flocks increase, when you have plenty of silver and gold, and when you have abundance of everything, be sure you do not feel self-important and forget the Lord your God who brought you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery, and who brought you through the great, fearful wilderness of venomous serpents and scorpions, an arid place with no water. He made water flow from a flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your ancestors had never before known, so that he might, by humbling you, test you, and eventually bring good to you. Be careful not to say, my own ability and skill have gotten me this wealth. You must remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives ability to get wealth. If you do this, he will confirm his covenant that he made by oath to your ancestors, even as he has to this day. Now, if you forget the Lord your God at all, and follow other gods, worshiping and prostrating yourselves before them, I testify to you today that you will surely be annihilated, just like the nations the Lord is about to destroy from your sight. So he will do to you, because you would not obey him. Deuteronomy 9 Listen, Israel. Today, you are about to cross the Jordan so that you can dispossess the nations there, people greater and stronger than you, who live in large cities with extremely high fortifications. They include the Anakites, a numerous and tall people whom you know about and of whom it is said, who is able to resist the Anakites. Understand today that the Lord your God who goes before you is a devouring fire. He will defeat and subdue them before you. You will dispossess and destroy them quickly, just as he has told you. Do not think to yourself after the Lord your God has driven them out before you. Because of my own righteousness, the Lord has brought me here to possess this land. It is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out ahead of you. It is not because of your righteousness or even your inner uprightness that you have come here to possess their land. Instead, because of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God is driving them out ahead of you in order to confirm the promise he made on oath to your ancestors, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is about to give you this good land as a possession, for you are a stubborn people. Remember, don't ever forget, how you provoked the Lord your God in the wilderness. From the time you left the land of Egypt until you came to this place, you were constantly rebelling against him. At Horeb, you provoked him, and he was angry enough with you to destroy you. When I went up the mountain to receive the stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord made with you, I remained there forty days and nights, eating and drinking nothing. The Lord gave me the two stone tablets written by the very finger of God, and on them was everything he said to you at the mountain from the midst of the fire at the time of that assembly. Now at the end of the forty days and nights, the Lord presented me with the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant, and he said to me, Get up, go down at once from here, because your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, have sinned. They have quickly turned from the way I commanded them and have made for themselves a cast metal image. Moreover, he said to me, I have taken note of these people. They are a stubborn lot. Stand aside and I will destroy them, obliterating their very name from memory. And I will make you into a stronger and more numerous nation than they are. So I turned and went down the mountain while it was blazing with fire. The two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, you had indeed sinned against the Lord your God, and had cast for yourselves a metal calf. You had quickly turned aside from the way he had commanded you. I grabbed the two tablets, threw them down, and shattered them before your very eyes. Then I again fell down before the Lord for forty days and nights. I ate and drank nothing because of all the sin you had committed. 
doing such evil before the Lord as to enrage him. For I was terrified at the Lord's intense anger that threatened to destroy you. But he listened to me this time as well. The Lord was also angry enough at Aaron to kill him. But at that time I prayed for him too. As for your sinful thing that you had made, the calf, I took it, melted it down, ground it up until it was as fine as dust, and tossed the dust into the stream that flows down the mountain. Moreover, you continued to provoke the Lord at Teberah Massa, at Kibroth Heteva, and when he sent you from Kadesh Barnea and told you, Go up and possess the land I have given you. You rebelled against the Lord your God, and would neither believe nor obey him. You have been rebelling against him from the very first day I knew you. I lay flat on the ground before the Lord for forty days and nights, for he had said he would destroy you. I prayed to him, O sovereign Lord, do not destroy your people, your valued property that you have powerfully redeemed, whom you brought out of Egypt by your strength. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ignore the stubbornness, wickedness, and sin of these people. Otherwise, the people of the land from which you brought us will say, The Lord was unable to bring them to the land he promised them, and because of his hatred for them, he has brought them out to kill them in the wilderness. They are your people, your valued property, whom you brought out with great strength and power. Luke 7. After Jesus had finished teaching all this to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was highly regarded, but who was sick and at the point of death. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they urged him earnestly, He is worthy to have you do this for him because he loves our nation, and even built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not presume to come to you. Instead, say the word, and my servant must be healed. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. He turned and said to the crowd that followed him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. So when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave well. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the town gate, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, who was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bayer, and those who carried it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. So the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they began to glorify God, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and God has come to help his people. This report about Jesus circulated throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. John's disciples informed him about all these things, so John called two of his disciples and sent them to Jesus to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? At that very time, Jesus cured many people of diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and granted sight to many who were blind. So he answered them, Go tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news proclaimed to them. Blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. 
When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Look, those who wear soft clothing and live in luxury are in the royal places. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he is. Now all the people who heard this, even the tax collectors, acknowledged God's justice, because they had been baptized with John's baptism. However, the Pharisees and the experts in religious law rejected God's purpose for themselves, because they had not been baptized by John. To what, then, should I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children, sitting in the marketplace, and calling out to one another. We played the flute for you, yet you did not dance. We wailed in mourning, yet you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunk, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Now one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. Then, when a woman of that town, who was a sinner, learned that Jesus was dining at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfumed oil. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. She wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the perfumed oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. So Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. He replied, Say it, teacher. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owed him five hundred silver coins, and the other fifty. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt cancelled. Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then, turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss of greeting, but from the time I entered, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfumed oil. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, are forgiven. Thus she loved much, but the one who is forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The next daily reading through the Bible, week 12, day 2, Deuteronomy chapters 10 through 14, Psalm 5, Luke chapter 8. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible. NETBible.com, copyright. 1996-2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC, all rights reserved.